All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's session called Thinking Through Rollup Scenarios with Customizable Rollups. My name is Emily and I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Amy Buccifero. Amy is a Senior Project Manager at Arcus Incorporated and has been a part of the Salesforce ecosystem since 2012. She's also been involved as a Women in Tech user group leader and early contributor to the program that became Pep Up Tech and is a member of the Salesforce.org Partner Advisory Board Product Committee. We're thrilled to have Amy here today to discuss customizable rollup scenarios, which is a crucial part of nonprofit operations. Before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping items. A recorded version of this webinar will be available after the event on the Nonprofit Dreaming YouTube channel, and all attendees will receive an email when these recordings are available. This is going to be an interactive session, so as Amy asks questions, please use the chat to submit your responses, and the wonderful Marciana is going to be your chat moderator today. And so with that, welcome once again to Thinking Through Rollup Scenarios with Customizable Rollups. Take it away, Amy. Thank you so much, Emily. I'm very excited to be here today. So uh, just a quick, um, Yes, thank you to our sponsors. Um, and intro to intro to me, um, very quick. Uh, I come from a, uh, I studied poetry. So I, I do not come from a technical background at all. Um, I was an accidental admin and uh, moved into consulting. And now I get to help uh, nonprofit organizations with their Salesforce uh, work every day. I'm working for Arcus. We have an education and enablement model. So the kind of thing that I'm doing right now, um, I get to do all the time. I get to teach people about how to use these great tools on how to make them work specifically for their organizations. Uh, I also write about it, uh, as do other members of our team. So I put in here a little link to subscribe to our blog. Uh, there's can really great content frequently for nonprofits in there, as well as just about the platform in general. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is about my philosophy on approaching a problem with Salesforce as a tool. So this is the, the, the idea of this session is really to help how you would think through, can I do this with customizable rollups? What could I do with customizable rollups? How could I make this work? So when I'm thinking through a problem, I'm always thinking about the why before the how. And the simplest and making the simplest choice possible and the most sustainable choice possible in terms of cost of ownership over time, ability to maintain, to change something, making it something that an organization can own on their own. So you'll see a bit of that in how I go through thinking about the scenarios that we're going to talk about today. Uh, P.S. Arcus is hiring. Session outline, I'm going to go through some backgrounds on rollups, what they are, how we got to customizable rollups. There's a great article on this in the uh, in the MPSP documentation, but just for a little context on what exactly we're looking at today, talk about some structure and concepts about how customizable rollups work that we'll actually refer back to as we go through. I have three use cases prepared and we're going to configure the final elements of those together in a demo. And then what I would love to do is get hands on with someone's use case if, if possible. So rolling things up uh, is if you're, you're probably familiar with standard rollup summary, Salesforce rollup summary fields, the limitations around those, the legacy NPSB rollups and user-defined rollups and the limitations around those, just how we got to customizable rollups. So standard rollup summary fields, great if you have a master detail relationship and very simple filter criteria. Legacy NPSB rollups, really great if you're working exactly in the ways of those predefined scenarios. So last gift date, first gift date, uh, total this year, total last year, and I can exclude a record type or a type. Really, really, really powerful. Uh, but as people started to adopt 
this platform more and more, the limitations in how those work and how those can be filtered, most of all, started to build up. Uh, User-defined rollups is an attempt to get past that, but ultimately moving to customizable rollups gives us a much more sophisticated matrix of the different roll-up concepts, that the different idea of credit and rolling up concepts that we can use, as well as flexibility in defining different filter criteria that you could have for, for different circumstances. So I could have one set of filter criteria that goes to one set of roll-up fields, another set of filter criteria that, that goes to another, going to to and from, from and to the same objects. That's really one of the big superpowers of customizable rollups. You've also probably, if you've been doing this for a while, come across trying to do these things with declarative lookup rollup summaries, flows, uh, all these tools that let us kind of get around what is available in a straight configuration out of the box with uh, Salesforce or with the MPSP product. And you might've noticed that sometimes those get in the way of the NPSP functionality that's running on the side. So customizable rollups can solve a lot of the problems that we previously turned to something like DLRS for. There's definitely still things that custom customizable rollups scenarios that customizable rollups can't cover. It's usually because the relationship, you know, there's only rollups between certain, from certain objects to other certain objects. So any questions just about the concept of rollups in general before I move on? We don't have any questions so far, Amy. Fabulous. All right. I am going to. Move oh, wait, on. one just came Oops. in. Any idea if there are any are plans to allow customizable rollups to campaigns in the future? I have no idea on that one. That is not on any roadmap that I have seen. Um, but I think it would be nice. Another question just popped in. Is there a limit to how many rollup fields you can have? Um, I'm not sure what the, I don't think there's a, a limit specifically, but you do have to think about the load on your organization. So there's code running behind all of these. Um, and if you have things that are going to end up running at the same time, conflicting with each other, what you have to be careful of is the fact that this is looking at all of these records at least once a night uh, as certain records are entered. So you can end up overloading your, like your CPU limits and things like that um, if you overdo it. But I have done scenarios where I have a lot of these running. So, you know, maybe 30 on, an, on contact alone. Um, and it's, been okay, but that's cer it's certainly a thing that you would want to you would want to test and kind of load test. All right, I'm going to move on into the structure of customizable rollups. There's two parts in the settings that define the rollup itself. Uh, that's the filter group and the rollup definition. So a filter group you can use across multiple rollup definitions. Uh, this filter group is a set of filter rules where you have the kind of like a report, object, field, operator, value. Uh, we'll look at these a little bit together in our scenarios. It's basically what records you want to apply. And um, the one thing to be careful of around that is that it's strictly and logic. Um, so it's any filter rule that you put in a filter group, all of them have, to, every single line has to be true for something to meet that 
criteria. There's also a, a funny little trick in there that uh, if you if you use a filter group in a roll-up definition and there's a criteria related to an object that isn't referenced in the roll-up definition, it gets it gets ignored. So this is a thing you want to test these things, right? And also think through them carefully. And on the side of the roll-up definition, that's where you say uh, it, what object and what field is the, the value that I want to write going to. Uh, what's the operation? So we'll talk a little bit about the different operators that's saying, you know, am I summing things up? Am I finding the most recent, the oldest, that kind of thing. Um, and there's some complexity around uh, time frame and certain kind of roll up definitions that time frame is used in different ways on. I actually have a whole like reference chart on that that we can look at and, and look back to as we think through our processes as well. And there's different roll up types. So there's kind of credit concepts that are baked in to the customizable roll up idea. Uh, and it's a little more uh, sophisticated than just hard and soft credits. And we'll look at that as well. And you're going to have to usually define some kind of date field and some kind of amount field if, if the roll up definition has any references to date and amount in it. So let's dig in a little bit and see what some of that looks like. So filter rules. Filter rules can be about when you go in and select these five different things. And it will show up as opportunity, payment, GAU allocation, account soft credit, or contact soft credit. So the first four there, it's literally about those objects. It's, it's very, very, very literal. Contact soft credit is a little fuzzier uh, because it's looking both at opportunity contact roles and partial soft credits in, in one in that definition. So you're going to want to make sure that anything that's uh, the contact soft credit, you don't try to get too elaborate on uh, because then the you might get unexpected results with partial soft credits. So the structure of the filter rule, like I said before, field operator value, think like a report, I'd say, you know, opportunity type equals one of these three things. Um, payment paid is false. You know, we can get into any field that you have, including any custom fields that you make, are going to be available in these filter rules, including formula fields, um, which is helpful, but also also a little dangerous uh, on those calculation things, system load I was talking about before. Uh, and here, the, the caution a little bit on that rules can be ignored if they don't apply to the roll-up type. And we can see what that actually looks like when we look at a, at a rule definition. So here's, here's where it gets fun. What can go to what? And so as we, we go and think through our scenarios, we're going to want to think through and okay, like what can I filter on and, and what what can go to what? So opportunities can go to pretty much everything. So it, the opportunity I would say is, kind of the, is the primary rolled up piece of information concept in customizable rollups. And there's concepts under that with the idea of account hard credits account soft credit, contact soft credit, and contact hard credit. Those are the, the roll-up types that would be available to you uh, when working with the opportunity object. And uh, the interesting thing about that is that when we're working with opportunities, we can actually roll contact soft credit up to the account and it will deduplicate. So the idea of all of the soft credits of people who are in that account, in that household, uh, which is a really nice thing that you couldn't really get at all with uh, with legacy rollups. And so this is, you know, this is a, a chart. It's, it's meant to 
be a reference. Um, another thing we can roll up from payments, which is very helpful, even though you can roll payments up from the opportunity, up to the opportunity and roll up from there, you can roll up directly from payments as well. Um, and from the opportunity, and you can do custom rollups from the opportunity to the recurring donation. Um, the one thing that's a little bit out of this is the idea of the GAU allocation to the general accounting unit. Those rollups are, are, are still sort of separate from the rest of the, the they're separate from the idea of credit um, because it's not going to an account or contact. And so that's directly always about the GAU allocation, although you can also use opportunity fields to roll up to the GAU allocation. So any questions about this fun, wacky chart? Yeah, we have one uh, question here. Uh, sorry, we have one question here. Are customizable rollups available for all objects or just these ones listed? Can we use them in PMM objects or custom objects? Just these ones listed, for now at least. So if you're looking at other objects and wanting to, that's when you go back to the idea of um, like the rollup field types. So Salesforce rollup summary fields where you have master detail relationships, which I know exists in some of the PMM stuff. Um, and DLRS flows, etc. You don't run into as much of an issue of those things conflicting when you're rolling up to and from objects that wouldn't be referenced in MPSP generated rollups at all. So um, that's when it's safer to use something like DLRS or flow uh, to get it's 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 kind of, it, it's similar, right? Like what you could do with customizable rollups for anybody who's who's used DLRS, but um, within specific concepts that align with how MPSP works in general um, and very, very admin friendly configurable. So. Oh, Amy, we do have uh, a couple more questions that came in. Um, for the target object, is that recurring donation, the legacy or the enhanced version? It's the same object in, in legacy or enhanced. Um, so this, the, the rollups could be used in both. Okay. And the next question is how do payments get linked to the account or contact? Are those built in or NPSP fields or is it connected through the opportunity? through the opportunity. So that's where you get the idea of having hard, uh, having kind of the credit on that. So it's through, it's through those referenced on the opportunity directly. Okay, that's it for questions. You can move forward. Super. Okay. So let's talk about the different rollup types and what they actually do. Because one of the things that we have to select when we're making rollup de definition is the rollup type. And there's a lot that actually kind of comes packaged with that. So when you're looking at uh, in a, the, the idea of account hard credit, that is the account field on the opportunity. That's how that relationship is established. So whatever that account lookup is on the opportunity, if it's the household, if it's the organization, that's what we're looking at when we're talking about, that's the relationship that we're looking at when we're talking about account, uh, account hard credit. When we're looking at the account soft credit rollup type, that is specifically the account soft credit object. So it's not looking at contact soft credits at all. That's a separate thing. Okay. We'll get down there. Um, a, when we're looking at account soft credit, it's about the account soft credit object, um, which is a way to give, it's a, you know, a, a junction on opportunities with accounts basically to give them uh, soft credit. When we're talking about contact soft credit, this is contact roles, partial soft credits, credits, 
Um, and when you're rolling up to the account, it's those things about the contacts that are related to that account. Um, and it won't count the same opportunity twice in that uh, for a household. So when we're talking about contact hard credit, and this is the a difference from uh, legacy rollups to customizable rollups. And so sometimes you sometimes if you're converting over, it's it's easy to to convert, but you have to think about your data structure a little bit. Um, the contact hard credit is the primary contact on an opportunity when that opportunity is with a household account. So that's when the contact gets hard credit is when they're the primary contact and the opportunity is with their household. Any questions on this? So far, no. All right, go on. All right, I'm, I swear we're gonna get into to actually looking at things pretty soon here. Oh, a question just came up. Um, is sure. there a way to combine hard credit and soft credit in a roll up? No, not exactly, but you can combine them. So you could roll you can roll them both up and and add them together. Another so, oh sorry. Go ahead. No, I it's another question. So I wanted you to be able to fully answer the first question before we move to the next one. So there's so there's some things that you that you know you would have to have kind of more advanced logic in your formulas than just adding these together. Like, and there's some things that you wouldn't really be able to get in the combination that are the, the special things with best gift year because of how it's looking at it all. But yeah, that's there. Those are, there's not a both really. Um, and the final question, is there a way we can find out if we have any legacy rollups? If you, if you have MPSP, you're either working in legacy rollups or customizable rollups. So when you go into NPSP settings, I can show quickly. I go into NPSP settings and donations. If you see customizable rollups here and it's enabled, that means you have converted from legacy rollups to customizable rollups. They can't coexist, basically. Okay, that answers all the questions I see here. Super. All right. So this is a chart that I'm not really going to talk to too much. It's something that we'll we'll look back at when we're thinking through our scenarios. Um, when it's just kind of what fields we can roll up and what other information that we're going to need for any different type of roll up operation. So when we're looking at a smallest or largest roll up operation, so that's that's basically finding what is the least or or most highest value, um, the fields that we'll be able to select to roll up are strictly currency fields. So it's, that's always gonna be a, a currency field. Um, the amount field that you can reference though, and that's the, you know, the amount field that we're looking at in terms of the smallest or largest could be a currency or, or number. Um, so that's another thing about customizable rollups. Sort of the field that you look at for your criteria can be different than the field that you actually roll up to. Um, and you only need a date on that if it's not all time. If you have, if you're going for the first and last, you're rolling up a, a currency field also, but also um, the date field is necessary in that circumstance. And so the date field is going to determine is that date that's telling us what is the first and what is the last, like that's the date that, that we're looking at. Um, 
when we're looking at sum, there has to, it's the basically the amount field and uh, the amount field and the field to roll up are the same thing. So sum and when we're looking at sum and average, the what we roll up is definitively the amount field. We can't kind of cross fields in that circumstance. Um, and also with that, you only need the date field if it's not all time. Um, the best year total is a special functionality uh, that's that works, you know, a little different than anything else. It's it's based on what you define as the amount field. It will find the year in which that is that amount field is highest from the date field that you're using to define the year. Any questions? Yes. Is this the full list of operations? Smallest, largest, first, last, sum, average, and best year total. Yes. That's not filter operators. It's a different thing. It's it's the it's the operations that the roll up can do. Okay. Other questions? Nope. Um, all right, time concepts. When we're using, when it's all time, the, any date, any date field that you select is going to be for ordering only. So like what's from oldest to newest, that's what we're using date for. When we get to define days back, we can, do, it's a literal number of days. Uh, so if you want to do things like months and things like that, you have to kind of recalculate that into days and it's, in, it's inclusive from today. So if I said I want everything for the past seven days, that would be day and account. Account is like sum. Um, I saw that. I saw that uh, question. Uh, <laughs> Yes. So follow up to the question I asked previously. So it can't do a count. Uh, yeah, it can. It can do a count. The the count falls under the sum, and in that circumstance, it's uh, it's the number. It's like the number you just count. We'll we'll look at a count scenario. Um, we can bring that one up. And so, then, then, oh, sorry. It, go ahead. Um, I was going to say the next question is uh, if two customizable rollups are not working correctly as Salesforce support can figure it out, is there something you know of that might be causing the issue? Uh, depends on what you mean by not working correctly, but uh, it sounds like that person might have one of our uh, fun use cases for the end. Um, yep, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is it's a pretty complex thing. So there's a lot that can happen in here. Um, another thing that I wanted to do to, to years ago with the time concepts uh, is that you can use the fiscal year and you can select anything up to 20 years ago. So that's a a lot more flexibility than we had before with this with legacy rollups. All right, so thought process. Um, what do, what the first question, of course, is always why do I need this rollup? Uh, that's what we should be asking whenever we, we because really, like like when you're working with a report, there's a question that you want to answer with this information. There's something that you want to do with it. So like thinking through a problem, always starting with the why. Um, and then the other things we wanna to ask to be able to find out, can we use this tool for this? Where does the information I want live in Salesforce? What object is it on? What field is it on? Where do I wanna see it? Um, and can I go from that object to the other one? Um, does, it, does the concept that I'm trying to roll up match one of those roll up types? And 
if if no to any of these questions, can I move some data before or after writing that roll up? So it will, but also should I? Is it still going to mean the right thing? So that's kind of looking at the, the, the diagrams I had in the previous slides and saying, you know, does this check this? Does this check this? Does this check this? And if not, how can I get there? Okay. So configuration plan, map it out. Do this in a sandbox. And then the first thing you're going to want to do is create your target field, uh, build any what I'm calling tangentials, the things you know, related to this to get the information where you want it to be. Then we build our filter group, our roll-up definition, we test it, and then we go to production. All right. So talking through these example use cases a little bit. Um, And I saw the question there, are they are these real time or just scheduled overnight? Uh, for the most part, they're they're both. So it's a real time and when uh, a rec when a record is created uh, in in some edit circumstances. And this depends on uh, the roll up type to some extent. Uh, and but they're all they all also schedule overnight. Okay, so here's my scenario and I'm gonna talk through how I think about this. So my organization, I consider family foundation and donor advised fund giving as different things from other soft credits, but it's still not a hard credit. So I wanna segment and report on that giving information about an individual separately from other soft credits. Great. Okay. So decision flow. Can I do this? Well, I have my why here. My why is that I look at these two types of giving very differently of soft credit, very differently for contact. Um, so it's part of my stewardship plan to, to know what they do. I got, I've got my why. I want to, I want to be able to segment based on this information. Great. So where, where does the information live it's in opportunities and soft credits and it um but it's about the who, what the account is on the opportunity so i might have a little like how do i know what type the account is on the opportunity maybe not um but there's but can i get that information there sure i can there's a direct relationship i can build a formula or automation to get the account type onto the opportunity and then filter by that um, where do I want this to go? I want this to go onto a contact. That's one of the things that we can go from and to. Great. And it fits in the idea of soft credits. So it fits with one of my concepts. Great. I've checked my boxes. I can do this. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to go through my configuration plan. I'm going to build. Um, and I've already built. I've already done the the work of building so we're going to demo a little bit here i've already done the work of building the target field um and building the formula to get the type of the account on the opportunity to use that in my filter groups now what i have to do is configure my filter groups and build the roll-up definition so I already have roll-up definitions for contact soft credits. Great. Um, but that's including this information. It's, it's, that's including this uh, family foundation and donor advice fund giving. So the first thing I have to do is change my soft credit idea. Uh, well, my change, fil basically filter those out of my existing soft credits. So I can have here, 
This is my soft credit, existing soft credit filter group. This is the roles that I want to include. Uh, it has to be closed one. I can see just here the, the roll-ups that are using this filter group. So for these roll-ups, I actually wanna change this and I only have to change it here and we'll change this for all of the roll-ups. I wanna add a filter in here that's about the opportunity. That is the account type. Now, of course, live demo, I'm having trouble finding that field. Um, Amy, as you look for that field, I just want to let you know that we have about 30 minutes or so. Um, mm -hmm. And if anyone has any questions, it will be answered at the end of Amy's presentation. So um, hang tight. Interesting. Hmm. I can't find my field. Well, we can uh, just call it something else, just for the example, I would say this opportunity type does not equal, and hypothetically, I would say uh, donor advised giving here. It's funny, I don't know why I can't find that field, but all right. So I would exclude those from this filter group I hit save here, and now all of those rollups, all of those existing rollups are getting updated. They're all, they, I have effectively changed all of my rollups by just changing this one filter group. Now I want the opposite version of this for my other type of giving. So my other type of soft crediting. So I would clone this and call it, And I would just switch, oops, wrong one. Switch it to sort of the opposite type. All right. So that's my first scenario there. Now I wouldn't now I go and I build the roll up. So I go back to customizable rollups and I actually and I build the actual rollup to go in the target field. So my target object is the contact. My target field here first family foundation donor advised fund credit date to give it a dis a description. First this Contact Dave via a family foundation for donor advice. And I'm picking my operation here. So normal interactive session, I'd ask you, what is the operation? It's first. Time frame is all time, right? Because I want the first ever. Hypothetically, I could say within, I could say first of this year. And that's something that I could I could do with this logic. I'll leave this at all, as all time. And now I choose my roll up type. And so I'm going from the opportunity to the contact considering in considering soft credit. And so based on that, I have filter groups that are applicable to that. I can choose the new filter group I created. And here's where I choose the field to roll up. So I can choose because I my target field is a date field, I'm gonna choose any of these date fields. And so I'm gonna say close date and the date field that I'm doing this by 
I actually want to say, well, the uh, the first by ask date. I don't actually care what the first one that, that I, I care about the close date of the first one that came in, but I, I want to order it by the ask date. So you can see how you can get some flexibility there. Um, and when I save this, now I have a new roll up of this type and I could repeat this for other kind of versions of this soft, soft credit using that same filter group. So I could have another field for, you know, total family foundation and donor advice fund soft credits, like, and, and iterate it like that while only having to create that filter group once. Um, so in this example, this is a pretty straightforward idea, but I had information that was slightly off of, of it was information about the account on the opportunity. Um, I have to bring that information onto the opportunity and then I can use it to build this roll up. All right. Next use case. So I want to know what someone is committed to donate, um, but they haven't given yet. So one aspect of this is I need to know for my organization, what does it mean that, how do I define that something is committed? So I have that already thought out here, but that's certainly something that you would come across in terms of, okay, how do we define that something is committed? What does that mean in our data? And is it correct in our data? So I consider opportunities committed when close one, but I have another pre one stage that I can I consider committed also. And I'm using payments to track that funds are received. So I know that um, an opportunity could be closed one um, or commit or in the verbal commit stage. And I want to consider that as uh, that as a con an account or context commitment. Um, and I know what they paid via payments um, that, and, that, and that's a, a already an existing field on opportunities to show the remaining balance on an, on an opportunity uh, to take out of that any payments that have already been paid. So I have all of that already. Um, now going through my decision flow, uh why do i want this i want this so i can see how much money i'm expecting to come in for any given person in my stewardship and talk to them about it uh, is this coming from information where is this where does this information live in salesforce well it all ultimately lives on the opportunity great where do i want to put it i want to put it on both accounts and contacts I can do that. Um, does this align with one of my roll-up concepts? Well, I'm gonna think about that a little bit. So when I say an account or contact has committed something, how do I define what that account or contact is that is committed in those relationships? So I have the idea of an account field on the opportunity the, the primary contact on the opportunity. Does this align with those hard credit concepts, how those are structured with customizable rollups in terms of what I, I want to see here? So for our purposes, I'm going to say yes, because this doesn't include soft credit. Um, I'm not trying to, to do that. Um, I'm not trying to do that in my, uh, you know, in my calculations here, but I do want to, I do want to know what someone has directly committed uh, as, an in, as, as an individual or uh, on the account level. Um, so, okay, it does fit with one of my uh, one of the roll-up concepts that are available. And I, I, I that's an area I had to double check, but I double checked that. So what do I have to do to make this happen? Well, 
obviously I have to have a place for this to go. Um, and that means I build the fields that I want to put it in on the account or the contact. And I have to build the, the filter definition and the, uh, and the actual rollups to go into that. So the good thing is, is that I can use this filter definition all over the place with all of these rollups that I want to do. So let's look at how that works. All right. Here's my filter group. This is going to be a new filter group that I want to go through here. And I'm going to call this filter group committed opportunities. I'm going to say opportunities one or in a committed stage. And now I need to add my filter rules. Now, I'm going to do something here that uh, would be interesting. So I'm going to just say opportunity. I'm going to make this simple for the sake of time. Opportunity stage equals, uh, sorry, is in list. This allows me to select multiple. So I'm going to say it's either uh, awarded or posted, those are my closed one stages, or verbal commit. So these are the things that I, those are the stages that my organization considers committed. Um, I could do something here with, say, payment. Uh, paid equals false, considering that like that's the idea that I'm trying to roll up here. But unless I have all of the payments created and scheduled, if that's my policy, I could do pay, I could do roll ups from the payments and that would work. But if I do this, if I build a roll up that's just based on the opportunity, this payment criteria, I will be able to use this filter group, but this payment criteria will not apply uh, because it's it's not looking, it, the, the roll up is not actually looking at that object. So let's look at what that actually looks like when I'm building a roll up. So I have my target object here. I'm going to say the account. Um, the target field is the committed amount, outstanding commitment, and I'm just going to put that in there. And I want to sum. So to give you a on the count question, I just want to like, I just want to go back to that one a little bit here. So if I chose this, the field, um, do I have a number field here? I think that's a number field, maybe. No. Number of memberships, there we go. It's a number field. Um, I would have other choices here. This is where I have count and I can actually get like best year total. The donor streak one is actually one. So don't ask me about this. I have not uh, explored in depth, uh, but I think there's some pretty interesting things that can go on there, but I'm not gonna be able to answer those questions. Um, but to complete our use case here with Sorry, outstanding commitment. I want to sum that. When I say sum, time frame, I could I could limit this hypothetically to just this year or 
if I wanted to see, you know, what they committed to but didn't pay last year, I could do that with years ago. I could do days back. Um, I'm leaving this as all time for now. So here in the roll-up type is where the piece I was talking about before comes in. Um, I can do I could do payment hard credit to the amount. Um, or I could do opportunity to account hard credit. So what, what depends really here is if I really have all of the information and payments that I need, do, is the, am I only looking at payments that are created and scheduled, or do I need to look at the opportunity because it's possible that the payments aren't scheduled? So that's something to think about. That's kind of like a, how does my organization do this work that, that kind of comes into play here beyond just the, the technical considerations. I'm gonna say that uh, we don't create payments. We just log the payments when they come in. So I need to look at opportunity. And this is where I choose my filter group of committed opportunities. Now, if I just selected the opportunity amount field, that wouldn't be appropriate for this because they might have paid part of that amount already. Um, but that payment filter, because it's about payments, I'm looking at opportunities, isn't gonna work. But I have a remaining balance field on the opportunity already. So I can use that remaining balance field to roll up into a sum to get their outstanding commitment on any opportunities that are committed. And you can do the same thing on, uh, on the contact side. Uh, can I get a time check? I have yes, like actually, I was, just a, I was just about to, to pop in and say we have about eight minutes left. Yes. Okay. I'm going to quickly look at my third use case and then I'm going to answer questions. I don't think we'll have time to do a uh, audience participation version of this, but I would might be able to answer some of it in questions. So this is a, a, a funky example that represents something I've actually come across recently. Um, and now we're looking uh, more at the GAU side of things. So I give foundation funding and grant opportunities. Uh, it could be allocated across different general accounting units. Um, and the total grant amount is allocated when it's one, when the agreement is finalized, but not all the funds are immediately released. So I have somebody managing for any given allocation, if it has been released or not yet. Um, I have a custom status field for that, uh, but I wanna see the released funds separately from just the total uh, commitment that's from those grants rolling up to those GAUs. So decision flow, why do I want to see this? Well, um, my programs team needs to know if the funding has actually been released for their program yet. Great. Um, my decision flow, next step, okay, where is this information? This information is on the GAU allocation. Uh, the, the amount, whether or not it's released, and the opportunity, whether or not the opportunity is, is um, it's close one and if it is a grant. So that's all important information. I have access to all of that and I wanna put this on the general accounting unit. I have access to that relationship. So for my configuration plan, I need to put build a place for this to go and I need to build my filter definition and uh, my, my roll up. So I'm gonna hop in here and actually build that filter definition and look at what that filter definition and putting together this roll up would look like. So filter group. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call this uh, one grant least funds. Okay, skipping that for the purpose of time. So, about the GAU allocation, I want ones where the release status is released. I want ones where my opportunity is a grant. So, where 
There's my record type. And I want it where the opportunity is one. What this will let me do, now when I create this roll up, I'm going for the general accounting unit, created my, my fields, okay. Um, summing this up, And I can sum up the GAU allocation amount. If I had a custom amount field, like something else on the GAU allocation, I could I could do that too. All right. So this is just to show a, a, a scenario where when I'm looking at the GAU, I only have this roll-up type to work with. JU allocation to general accounting unit. And the whole idea of kind of credits and stuff is out of the picture at, at this point. It's more of a direct roll-up scenario. And this is, you know, how I could see this potentially going for other objects in the future. If if it goes that way. Okay. So questions and let's go. Questions. Uh, I saw, for example, one, are family foundations and donor advised fund account types or donation types? The idea is that they're account types and we would uh, potentially use automation to put that on as the you know type on the opportunity or use a formula field to say the account on, of, on this opportunity is of this type and bring that in. I had actually built that formula field um, but for some reason I couldn't find it. So I got I had to show that a little a little sideways. Um, other questions. It looks like we just have about one minute left um, for questions, but I see one here. <clears throat> Considerations when enabling customizable rollups for the first time in settings. What impact does this have on legacy fields? It's gonna change all of those fields that are all of the legacy fields that are there. So the values that are in them. Hypothetically, it copies it over. So hypothetically, it doesn't, act, it shouldn't actually change. Like they're for the standard legacy rollups. Where it gets funny is if you have any user defined rollups, you're going to want to uh, get carefully document those and rebuild them in, in customizable rollups. It's, it uses the same, it can use the same fields. So it's not like those fields go away. Great, well, I think with that, we are about out of time for questions, but I'm sure if anyone has any lingering questions, um, there is there any way that people might be able to have resources or reach out to you, Amy? Sure, uh, I'm, I'm imagining that we'll have some opportunity to uh, share our slide decks. I would love to make this, a, this this available as a reference. Um, and I've linked in it a lot of the help articles around customizable rollups. And you can always uh, find me on LinkedIn and Twitter, um, on the Arcus blog, we write a lot of things about that. And I'd be happy to uh, connect with anyone. Great, thank you. I, I I know for myself, this has really helped me um, feel a lot more confident diving into this uh, kind of complex but powerful world. So thank you for presenting on this today. Um, and so yeah, as, as the slide says, after this, you can click on the upper left corner uh, for reception um, in order to see what to do next um, and continue learning and networking. Um, thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Amy. Bye.